<laughs> well, hello again. Welcome to Verbling again. Hello, I'm using the electronic dictionary. I bought it uh, over five years ago. Uh, they had a small niche inside of that uh, dictionary. Then, uh, if I learn French, I need to buy chip, small memory chip in the front. Ah. French. I put uh, uh, in that niche, I can use as a French dictionary. So recently, I wanted to buy a um, Spanish dictionary. I ordered that yesterday I received. I put it in the niche, but I couldn't do that because uh, the, they had already model change. Today, I went to the electronic appliance shop. I needed to buy new, <laughs> a new electronic um, uh, dictionary again. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, the problem with technology. Finally, I paid a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just a small word of advice about that. Electronic dictionaries and Google Translate, for example, they're not always right, and they don't always in include... There, there's some stuff that's just not there. <laughs> doesn't include everything. But they are handy tools. I'm not, you know, dismissing them out of hand. Uh, I just... A small warning that they won't always be entirely correct. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the class. It's time for Famous Quotes class. Um, today's, <laughs> today's quotes are from a, a fellow named Frank Zappa, who you guys have probably never heard of, <laughs> but was... Uh, Definitely influential in American culture when I was growing up. So, uh, okay, I couldn't resist. Um, so, I couldn't help myself. I, I had to do this class because uh, this guy's a freak. His muse, he's a musician, a rock musician. Um, well, uh, let, let me ask. Uh, Michael, hello. Welcome to the class. Hey, t -shirt. Hey, have you ever heard of Frank Zappa? Me? No, for sure no. Frank Zappa. No, no, no. no. Frank. Doesn't ring any bell at all. Okay. I thought maybe not. You know, there it's very interesting to me. I've done a lot of traveling. It's interesting to me that there are there are musicians that everybody knows, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and everybody's heard of Michael Jackson. Yeah, all over the world. There are several American bands which are insanely famous in America and have a great deal of influence on American culture, which nobody else knows anything about. It always kind of freaks me out. How does that happen? Some bands are just get international recognition, and some absolutely not. I think Frank Zappa fits into that. Category. Nader, do you. Hi, Nader. Again. Bye. The way. Hi again. Hi again. No, I, ever... uh, I didn't hear about that, man. Okay. I'm not surprised, really. Uh, <laughs> Salvatore. H how about you? Hi, Salvatore. Howdy. Hi. Hi, Oakley. Good morning. Morning. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Great. Nice. Are the... nice to see you again, teacher. Yeah, nice to have you I, here. I heard about Frank Zappa, teacher. You have? I, yes. yes. I, I know that uh, uh, his father uh, was born uh, in Italy. That's true. I've forgotten about that point. Absolutely correct. And uh, I read an article that uh, where I explained that uh, it's difficult uh, to explain uh, the meaning uh, the mean uh, of music uh, of uh, Frank Zappa, teacher. <laughs> yes, precisely. Exactly. Thank you very much. I'm glad you said it so everyone doesn't have to take my word for it. Thank you. Um, that's exactly right. His music is somewhat unique, uh, very uh, abstract. If... If uh, if Frank Zappa were not a musician but a painter, he would be Salvador Dali, for 
for example. <laughs> kind of existential uh, <laughs> kind of weirdness. Uh, yes. Is he still alive? No, he passed away I think in the 90s, mm -hmm. I believe, if my if my memory is correct. No, he he was uh, he was um, popular and creating music in the late 60s, 70s, and 80s, pretty much. And he has uh, <laughs> he has two children <laughs> whose names are as follows. Uh, uh, he has two kids. He has a boy named Dweezel. <laughs> and uh, and he, he has a daughter named Moon Unit. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's their names. He, he was a very strange guy, Frank. Uh, hello, Natalie. Welcome to the class. Uh, hello. hello, teacher. Uh, nice Hi. to see you. <laughs> How are you today? Um, fine, thank you. <laughs> Natalie, have you ever heard of Frank Zappa? Uh, actually, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe heard, but I don't remember exactly. Uh, okay. I mean, okay. In English, you might say, "Oh, it rings a bell," but I can't place it. All right. Uh, okay. It rings a bell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't place it. Meaning, you can't place it in your mind, in your memory. <laughs> when did you hear about it? How did you hear about it? What, what do you know about it? Okay, we often use that phrase to express that. Okay, anyway, uh, welcome, and uh, in half a second, we're going to start looking at some of his quotes and discussing them, so I'll talk to you in a little bit. H Heidi, I, I don't think I asked you, have you ever heard of Frank Zappa? No. Negative. Okay. I wonder, where's Ken today? I bet Ken's heard of Frank Zappa. Uh, a member of the group. He, uh, <laughs> okay, his band, um, he, he headlined. Okay, when one person is the, the head of the band, he has a band behind him, but mm -hmm. he's the headliner, like Michael Jackson, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's known as Michael Jackson. Of course he had his own band, but, uh, yeah. He he headlined the band, um, which was called the Mothers of Invention. Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, yeah, very kind of interesting. And uh, Frank Zappa was interesting not only because his music was very unique and uh, kind of surreal. Uh, but still rock and roll, but very... Was that surreal? Surreal. Surrealism. Well, like Salvador Dali. The watch flop melting on the, uh, uh, on the log and sort of... Things aren't really... Warped reality, kind of. Surreal. In fact, you know, if I said, oh... Uh, Oh, the situation was surreal. It was strange. It was like a movie. Uh, um, bizarre, strange, and doesn't match what we know as reality. Real, surreal, <laughs> extra real. If I, I don't know if I explained that well enough, but... Okay, he, his music is kind of surrealistic, but also... Uh, why I say he was an influence on American culture uh, is because he was Frank Zappa was very critical of American society. He was definitely a sociolog sociological critic. Uh, the idea of plastic people can be attributed to Frank Zappa. People that uh, are so superficial, all they care about is uh, looking good. Basically, Frank Zappa was very con critical of consumerism and the government's basically propaganda war to get people to be a consumer society. He, he was a political pundit. He, he was a cultural influence. 
So, interesting guy. So, anyway, all that being said, uh, I'm going to kind of jump forward on the quotes here. And let's look at some of these. And He was a musician, so, so a lot of his quotes are, you know, uh, about music, related to music. Um, okay. Uh, Heidi, can you read the first one? Since you were the first in today. Okay. We thank you to decorate it. Time is just a bunch of... Uh, what? Can you say the same thing? No? <laughs> no. Oh, I had some voice, so I'm sorry. Uh, time is just a bunch of uh, uh, boring uh, production de deadline or de uh, dates by uh, which bills must be paid. Okay. What is yeah. Uncle Frank? Uh, many of his fans, by the way, would uh, refer to him as Uncle Frank because he's like the weird uncle. Uh, okay, what is Uncle Frank saying here? I don't think it's overly symbolic or metaphorical. Okay. What do you think about Bunch of writing. Production deadline, yes, I think so. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is a music a decoration for our lives? Indeed. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think of that way to phrase it? My kids, even the music can decorate my life. life. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay, you're sorry. Don't be sorry. Sometimes, okay, here's, I want to share a secret, a very personal secret with all of you. All right, don't tell anyone. Uh, my one of my uh, secret fantasies is to be rich enough to hire my own backup singers, like uh, like uh, three women who follow me around, snapping their fingers. And when I say <laughs> "Welcome to the class," they say "Welcome <laughs> to." <the> class. <laughs> I hope you're having a nice day. Nice day. <laughs> Do okay. do want to be Char uh, Charles? Yes, exactly. Very good. Ray Charles. You've done it. That's it, Heidi. Ray Charles is like my hero. Excellent. <laughs> you got that reference. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that you got that. Yes, exactly. The Rayettes. Ray Charles and the Rayettes. Exactly. I, I want my own Rayettes so that my life is fully decorated at all times. Wouldn't that be great? Um, Michael, do you think your life deserves a soundtrack? What do you mean? A soundtrack, like in a movie. The music that plays behind the movie is yeah, called I the know, soundtrack. Yeah, I know, but what do you mean deserves a soundtrack? Kind of weird. Well, I, it, would, do you think it would be uh, good to have a soundtrack? So as you're... You know, you're driving in your car to work. And as oh. you're... Uh, at the office, you know, typing on your computer. Well, actually, I have uh, soundtracks, but they're changing. <laughs> like, uh, it's not necessarily soundtrack, but a piece of music I uh, listen, and uh -huh. uh, it's so catchy that it's in my head. Uh -huh. For example, and I uh, catch myself that I could sing that uh, music like a little bit in English. For example, I could sing. Uh, no, no, Michael. Sorry, uh, when ahead. you are proposing, uh, when you are proposing, or when there is a big action in your life, do you like okay, to have soundtrack in the background? When you are getting a new job, or when you are talking to your wife, when you have sad news, something like this. Not uh, exactly in that moment, but after that, I could listen to some music. Mm, okay, all right. How about you, Nader? Does music decorate yes, your life? Yes. Uh, no, it doesn't decorate my life, but uh, I guess uh, everyone's uh, life has some moments that deserve to uh, 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 that deserve a soundtrack. Uh, some okay. important moments. Fair enough. Like when you are losing someone, you know, you uh, deserve uh, a sad soundtrack. When you are getting a new uh, good news, you deserve a happy soundtrack. Okay. Why don't you hear a music in your background, Nathan? 
because I cannot play music when in funeral or when I'm proposing to my oh, no, no. future wife. I cannot take my MP3 and put in my ears. No, when you learn English, you cannot plug. We should listen something. So we should hear something. But... I cannot go to propose with uh, earphones in my uh, ears. <laughs> and I tell her, uh, sorry, I'm listening to a great soundtrack for this moment. Why not? Uh, young people do that. <laughs> <laughs> more and more I see that, actually. <laughs> people That's having sweet. conversations with an earbud in their ears. I see that more and more often. Uh, okay. Uh, Salvatore, does music decorate your life? Yes, teacher. I like uh, hear music, uh, especially in English, because uh, I hear the English music uh, uh, to improve uh, uh, my my English and uh, to understand the uh, word in English, teacher. Salvatore, I like to listen to Italian music when I eat Italian food. Do you like Italian music, teacher? Uh, I like Italian food much better, but yeah. <laughs> okay. I love Italian music. <laughs> you do? Italian. Yeah. Yes. Heidi does. Eros. When? Eros and Mazzotti. Yes, yes, I like it. There you go. Good choice. <laughs> Very nice. I yes. read the, when I read the article uh, about Frank Zappa, uh, when he was a child, uh, he, did, he didn't like Italian food. <laughs> oh my god, what can it possible? <laughs> I told you he was a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a freak. Who doesn't like Italian food? I really I don't think I've ever met anyone who doesn't like Italian food. Do all you guys like Italian food? Yeah. Yeah. At least macaroni. Okay. All right. Okay. If I say I'm indifferent about that. Okay, but you don't dislike it. Of All course right. I don't dislike, but it's not like uh, the best food that you can eat. You can find something better. Okay, but you don't dislike it. I, I no, just, that's, that's my sure. point. Who dislikes it? I like pizza, I like, for sure. Okay. I eat pizza like uh, twice a month. Come on. Uh, okay. Uh, Natalie, how about you? Does, uh, would your life be dull and boring and production deadlines and bills being paid? <laughs> <laughs> if, if there were no music, uh, <clears throat> uh, maybe not exactly as only uh, uh, production deadlines, but I think uh, it's for sure that uh, music uh, decorates our life because I'm um, uh, while uh, you are talking uh, now, I'm thinking about some moments uh, when you, for example. Uh, watch the movies uh, without um, without sound on a mute, uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, mm, mm, I think the music uh, makes uh, a perception of the world more completely, such as uh, mm. our. Mm, uh, eyesight, uh, uh, mm, 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 ability of, um, of ah. uh, see or hear or uh, feel, and uh, so the, the music, I think, is the, the same uh, category, maybe. Okay, so maybe music enhances the senses. Is that what you're trying to Enhan say? Enhances the senses, yeah. Yeah, to enhance, yeah. to make better, to make more full, yeah, yeah. to make yeah, yeah. brighter and yeah, everything. Okay. All right. As well as, I think, uh, to stimulate the emotions, I would just add, if I might, to what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Have you, uh, Natalie? Have you? Okay, you watched a movie without the soundtrack. Have you ever? Have you ever watched a music video without the without the sound? Yeah, yeah. My it's uh, it's uh, <laughs> sometimes it can be um, pretty um, funny. <laughs> exactly. Because uh, yeah. Weird. Because uh, yeah, weird, and uh, sometimes it's th there are no. Um, 
there are no um, meaning. Uh, yeah, there's no context. Yeah. Behind what yeah. they're doing. Why are they dan jumping on the bed? Yeah. Why are they <laughs> flying over a factory? What is going on here? <laughs> okay. There's there's no context, so they're just completely meaningless series of actions and uh, situations that seem to be totally disconnected. Yeah. I know. It's a weird thing. I'm glad I'm not the only one who has done that, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> For confessing. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not the only one who does weird things. Okay. Natalie, uh, can you read this next quote? Let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, without deviation, progress is not possible. Hmm. What do you think of that? Um, uh, I think that... Uh, he means that maybe that uh, progress is always uh, um, some casual things. Maybe uh, uh, the prog uh, the program uh, the progress um, can can be. Um, um, if if there are no deviations, uh, the the all people uh, will be very um, maybe uh, rational, only rational, and uh, try to uh, save or. or what they have at this moment and uh, don't want to change something. And uh, when the people who uh, <clears throat> appear, appear the people uh, who have some de deviations, <laughs> they mm -hmm. make a progress, something like that. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, of course, uh, this statement is the very simply put, is that basically the basis of the theory of evolution. We wouldn't evolve without uh, deviation. Uh, okay. Uh, Heidi, what do you think of this statement? How do you I see think this? So. You read it. Mm, yeah. uh, pro not only progress, even uh, inventions. Mm -hmm. In the case, inventors are a little strange. Uh, they are a uh, little, uh, what's the, uh, diverged from our society. Uh huh. Okay. Well, they deviate. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, related word in definitely related to our subject here, Frank Zappa. Uh, he even described himself as a deviant, um, which is a very kind of interesting English word because it has negative connotations. Mm -hmm. If you're a deviant, then you uh, you deviate, you alter from the nor normal social codes, ethics, mores, but not necessarily laws, but the normal social codes, the accepted idea of what is the right thing to do and be and act and say. You're a deviant. Somehow, in English, this has taken on a very negative kind of connotation. I, Einstein and uh, Thomas Edison are like that kind of people. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Many of these people were deviants even in school. They, they dropped out of school. They didn't do what was the normal social norm at the time. And, you know, look what they went on to accomplish. Uh, Michael, what do you think of this quote here? Well, <laughs> what, Michael, are okay. you a cat? <laughs> no, it's sorry. It was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. It was uh, almost. Uh, so I, I woke up I early in the morning, and I'm kind of sleepy. 
So, <laughs> so without <laughs> deviation, progress is not possible. Well, OK, I agree with him. Give me an example of deviation. What happened? And well, there's a gazillion types of deviation. There's biological <laughs> deviation, uh, Give social. Give me a good one, but uh, direct example, not uh, not um, so concrete. Okay. Concrete. A direct. Like in layman's but not terms. Concrete? Okay, well what? you're you're contradicting yourself. Direct but not concrete. Concrete no, is concrete. direct. No concrete. Concrete. I say concrete. concrete. It, I know concrete direct. is direct. Yeah. Oh, you you want indirect? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I want direct and concrete. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. All right, fine. I, I cannot say two opposite words. Like biological, thing. biologically. Um, all right. If uh, more human beings start being, uh, okay, a human being is born with six toes, and. Uh, and women find that extremely attractive, this deviation will result in an evolution whereby uh, men with six toes will be considered more attractive, thus they will breed more children which will have six toes, and thus we have evolution. Social deviation, um, okay, uh, maybe the entire society is nationalistic, it believes in the the country's always right, and but one guy is a social deviant, and he believes that um, not necessarily everything that his government is telling him is true. He is a social deviant. Um, okay, uh, artistic deviation. Okay, the birth of surrealism, the birth of modern art, was a s artist going crazy, not doing the accepted thing, not painting in the accepted way, not doing portraits and landscapes and still lifes. Um, Andy Warhol, when he started pop art, that was not the way you do art. Andy Warhol was very much a deviant. Okay? Yeah, I agree, because usually that happens uh, when someone uh, brings new idea to the table or something mm -hmm. says new. Well, there usually you that wasn't said before, yeah? Yeah, Michael, one of your favorite phrases, thinking out of the box. That yeah. means you're, you're deviating from the norm. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, that's exactly what this is all about here. That you should consider only one thing. You shouldn't deviate too much because you could be considered as crazy. Crazy, or even an outlaw, for that matter. What was that? Outlaw? An outlaw, a criminal. Oh, okay. Quite possibly, yeah. You're uh, you're you're very much correct about that. Um, okay, uh, Nader, anything to add here about this statement? Any other insights? No, but I agree with you uh, that without the deviation, uh, no creation would be possible. If everyone is imitating uh, the other people, so uh, we will uh, reach the same uh, result. You know, without uh, deviation and uh, some kind of creativity, we will uh, we will follow the same course and we will reach the same results. So uh, we need to. Uh, some people have uh, to deviate uh, to uh, progress. You know, it's something like without mistakes, you cannot uh, success. So some people uh, have right. to think differently and uh, reach uh, other uh, results. So uh, will not be uh, everyone would be uh, will not be the same. Right. Okay. That. Okay. Without mistakes, you can't succeed, or you can't be a success, one or the other. But okay. Yes. All Thank right. You. Do you think it's possible uh, that human beings will become so homogeneous, uh, homogeneous, so um, oh, I don't know, indoctrinated social norms so that there's no crimes and everybody just does the same thing every day and uh, there are no deviations. Yes, uh, that's what government's like. Yeah. I think people would bore themselves to death. <laughs> <laughs> that's my personal view. Which brings us to the next uh, quote. First of all... Parents also like this. <laughs> Just be normal. Just be normal. 
No, I, I, uh, okay. Salvatore, any last comments about this quote, or are you ready to move on? Uh, and the next scientist teacher. Science? I Sorry? To, I have to read uh, this sentence. It isn't sure. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. It isn't ne necessary to imagine the world ending in fire or ice. There are two other possibilities. One is paperwork, and the other is nostalgia. <laughs> okay. Well, this goes right along with what I was just talking about with Nader. <laughs> the end of the world ends in complete boredom. <laughs> the teacher, uh, sorry, what is no nostalgia? Is uh, it an Italian word? No. Is it? I don't know. Is it? I'm not sure. Nostalgia. Okay, because Sorry. also in, Ita in Italy we have uh, nostalgia is a word in Italy means uh, when uh, you feel sad. Mm hmm Okay. In Italy. Well, you, not just in Italy. You can feel sad in France too. Kidding. <laughs> uh, yes, Nader. Comment. That was funny. That was oh, fine, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, nostalgia is, yes, it's kind of a sad, wistful longing for the past. Oh, it was so much better before Obama was elected. <laughs> oh, it was so much better when it was the USSR. Oh, life was better when I was young. <laughs> yeah, that's nostalgia. It has to do with sadness, but it also has to do with wishing or longing that the past for the past. Oh, when I was young and I was healthy and all of that. Uh, okay. okay. So, what do you think of this quote? Hmm. Salvatore? Are you, are you there? Yes. Thought I lost. Uh, one is. Hey, sorry, teacher. I don't know what uh, does it mean. Paperwork. Okay, not a problem. Paperwork. Oh boy. Uh, paperwork. Writing papers and typing papers and uh, accounting. Everything that has to do with records and papers and documents and. Ooh, filing and office work and all that, copying, all of that we could classify as paperwork. All right. Or more specifically, um, all right, you want to get your driver's license, you have to fill out a form. You're doing the paperwork. Okay. Or you buy a car, you need some kind of a title with the seller's signature and your signature and a witness and okay um, you refer to those documents as the paperwork okay I got my paperwork from from my new car alright so all of those things in this case I, I think he's talking about the general idea of sitting around in an office pushing okay. papers yeah. It is a sentence, a metaphoric sentence, this teacher. I think so, yes. Right. And, and a bit sarcastic, in my opinion. <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, teacher, I don't know what uh, does it mean, uh, Frank Zappa, in this sentence. Uh, okay. But. All right, uh, it's okay. Let, let's see if others have a, some kind of an interpretation here. Uh, Natalie, what do you think he's trying to say here? Um. Any idea? I mean, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> yes, but I, I, um, I'm thinking how it's better to say. Mm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Heidi, what do you think? You got any ideas here? Uh, people often say, oh, it's the uh, end of the world, right? Uh, yeah. They have had a shock. <laughs> but you shouldn't think about the fire or other extreme, extreme uh, situation. Only office work and uh, the paper work or thinking about only past. Uh, it's kind of uh, end of the world. <laughs> Right. Equivalent of fire, right? <laughs> right. Well, I think yes. It's a large part of it. Mo ev almost everyone, not everyone, but almost everyone who considers the end of the world, it's a big kaboom. <laughs> you know, dramatic and final and uh, yes, uh, a huge event, but. It may not go out with a bang. It may go out with a whimper. Uh, Michael, what do, what do you think? Well, not necessarily only it is to one in paperwork and the other in nostalgia. Is nostalgia? Yeah. Could be other things. I, I think uh, Salvatore was correct that he's using these examples in a symbolic or metaphorical way to in generally just say a very boring not really dramatic the world may end in an extremely boring slow unexciting way <laughs> I think that's the idea uh, what do you think Nader how's the world gonna end yeah I agree I totally agree with him that we do not need a natural disaster or something. Yeah. That we will die. Uh, just leave it to the time and you will die. <laughs> the world will die. Okay. As, it's uh, almost, uh, as it is, it would be the same as today, maybe. All right. Uh, okay, I told you that Frank Zappa had some uh, ideas about nationalism. Here, Here's one of them. Uh, Nader, can you? Can and yeah, oh, no, no. What, what about you? Do you believe that the world will end by uh, natural disaster, or do you believe that the world will end one day? Or nuclear war, or meteorite, or sun explosion, or some crazy? St no, I, I kind of, I'm with Frank on this one. I think it would be you... uh, a, a very slow and boring and insignificant kind of. Uh, <laughs> the last human dies, and no one notices. But you believe in the, uh, the end of the world? You believe that the world will end one day? Uh, it has to, more or less. There's a time limit. There's a half-life on the sun. It, after so long, it's going to go nova. So, of course, this is billions of years in the future. But it has to be. It has to at some point. But, uh, you know, a long time from now. Teacher, um, may I argue, may I, uh, argue with you? <laughs> I sure. Think that, uh, I love yeah, that. I think, I think that uh, uh, human beings uh, uh, will not have enough time uh, to die uh, from paper work because uh -huh. uh, um, because uh, actually um, because uh, uh, to um, uh, just a second. <laughs> um, Because to make it happen, uh, uh, there are no uh, another problems and uh, deviations and so on. And uh, in that case, I, I think uh, it may be, be possible. But uh, <clears throat> uh, in our world, I think uh, uh, it's, uh, okay. it's not. <laughs> Okay, I, let me let me try to make another point since you want to argue. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tell me exactly when did Austri oh, I can't even say that Australopithecus. Okay, Homo erectus. That's easier to say. Uh, the various stages of human development. Okay. Um, Neanderthal man, Homo erectus. Uh, when did they? When did the world end for them? You don't know because it, there was no kaboom. 
They just sort of gently faded into the night because they evolved into us. So basically their their end of the world was just nostalgia and paperwork. But, 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 <laughs> but you cannot say that uh, uh, it was the end of the world for them because it's uh, just evolution but not the death or end. Uh -huh. Well, I would. That's <laughs> 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 for the sake of argument. You <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't know. Look, look at something else. I guess woolly mammoths. All right. Yeah, the end of the world for woolly point. mammoths. Yeah, we we both are. And there's no wrong or right answer, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Playing around with words. Uh, okay, woolly mammoth. All right. Was there? A, any exact ending? I don't know. Dinosaurs? You know, whatever. You know, it just... There's no specific wham. Uh, but, uh, you know... Yeah, it may be for him. Uh, repeating, um, remembering your past every day. Or uh, a boring paperwork is uh, very, very boring for me. It's kind of a uh, one of the ending the same. In the fire. <laughs> so paperwork is traumatic for you as a fire? <laughs> fire and ice? <laughs> okay. no, like all those people always say, uh, in the past, it was very good, or always say, boring, right? That's funny. Okay. Uh, here's a little bit of tongue in cheek uh, nationalism. Uh, Nader, can you read this one? Yes, you can't be a real country unless you have a beer and an airline. It helps if you have some kind of a football team or some nuclear weapons. But at the, but at the very least, you need a beer. Yeah. If you want to be a real country, <laughs> you have to have your own beer and an airline and hopefully a football beer, beer. team. Ah, and you're not a real country. country. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. This is a tongue-in-cheek, sarcastic... Uh, okay. He's being sarcastic about the United States and nationalism in the United States. Basically, he's... You know, because Americans think beer and an airline and a football team are... <laughs> but I guess uh, country. British people like uh, beverages more than you. I don't know. I, I really don't know. They are do famous of drinking. They are? Uh, okay. I'm not sure. Well, them but and the once, Irish. Once I, once I read uh, in a British magazine that Americans, after work, they go to the gym and we go to the bar. Ah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, I actually, I really don't know. <laughs> Basically, okay. These pubs uh, are are uh, basic there. This is it's a part of their culture, or something. True. Basically, I I do know one thing. If uh, as an English speaker, if um, if I really want to speak English with somebody, I wait till it's raining and then I go to a pub, and there's always going to be a <laughs> British person there. <laughs> 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 Every single time, wherever you are in the world, wait till it rains. Go to a bar, and there's some Brit sitting at the end of the bar, <laughs> for sure. It's like some rule they have or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't really know, but uh, yeah, kind of a neat thing. You, you can try it next time you travel abroad. Wait for a rainy day and go to the nearest bar. You can meet a British person. <laughs> try it out. Okay. All Thank right. You for speed. <laughs> that good advice. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I'm just going to say it. In my opinion, what he's saying here, he's making fun of Americans thinking that, oh, you're not a real country unless you have beer and your own airline. <laughs> Football team, nuclear weapons, yeah. Or go America. <laughs> so I, I think he's being sarcastic about the. Um, the American concept of what a 
real country is. Uh, in my opinion, Michael, what is a real country? <laughs> what do you need? Really? You should have your own no. fast food company. No, you should uh, have firstly a uh, happy population that lives in your uh, country that da don't have. So, population, would they say don't or doesn't for population? Okay, wait, uh, sorry, my brain is catching Popula up here. Population that doesn't or don't? Doesn't. Population that doesn't suffer of wars or, or struggle in poverty or ends up meat? What was the idiom? Uh, I don't know. So okay, so uh, they don't. So basically, they have uh, enough uh, food, and uh, this is like firstly. Uh, secondly, you have uh, like uh, some kind of uh, system, maybe democratic, where you can choose, elect, be elected. And also, one of the most important things is um, the thing that you go up and uh, down. What is it called? An elevator. Yeah, a social <laughs> elevator. Have you ever heard of that term? Oh, social elevator. I thought you yeah, were just like, going to say, if you want to be a real country, you have to have elevators. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> I like that's that, now. Okay. So basically, uh, uh, people sh could, uh, uh, for example, from the bottom, go to upper class, okay. uh, you, and so on. All right. You're talking very abstractly, and you're talking very seriously. What well, physical things? If you had to say some physical things, beer, airline, football team, nuclear weapons, what physical things should a country have if they want to be considered a real country. <laughs> well, what physical things? Yeah. I uh, do want like uh, this kind of uh, like he said. Okay, I will tell you like. Uh, kind of. Yeah. Kind of the same. Uh, you should have uh, trees, land, and uh, lakes. Trees, <laughs> lands, and lakes. Yeah. Well, uh, ask me why. Because you well, asked. Why? So that. Uh, okay. You asked me to tell you this kind of thing. They told you. Okay. There's no logic. Okay. Uh, Heidi. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what? People usually they are not conscious about their nationality, right? Um, I I'm living uh, in Japan, but I don't think I'm Japanese. I'm Japanese always. But uh, for example, uh, soccer game, um, World Cup, or. Uh, even nuclear weapon, it uh, protect their own countries. So uh, yeah. each country is uh, always developing their own uh, weapons. So uh, it's kind of a, a symbol of nationality. And I, I have several Italian friends. Uh, my friend said, uh, usually I don't think I'm Italian, but uh, I think I'm from Sicily. I'm from Venice, like that. Mm -hmm. Only soccer game. Uh, they they are conscious that oh uh, we are Italian so uh, they uh, what is it? they they are uh, conscious of the, the same become same oh we are Italian. Mhm. Mm okay. And okay. I'm not sure about the BPI is a kind of a guru guru to connect <coughs> the people with each other. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know, okay, I, uh, all right. I, I think, uh, all right, Frank Zappa's quote here, he's, he's basically talking about the American self-perception. All right, what do they think symbolizes America? Beer, <laughs> airline football team, nuclear weapons. What, what symbolizes, uh, Natalie, what symbolizes Russia, do you think? Uh... Vodka. <laughs> Come on, if Americans have beer, it's surely you have vodka. Uh, maybe for um, 
It's uh, actually it's a very difficult question because uh, yes. the question about uh, national idea is mm, not uh, mm, not answered uh, in Russia or. In Russia, uh, even um, even the Russians don't know actually. <laughs> and, uh, there okay. are a lot of uh, argues. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of joke maybe and um, a, a very big uh, question in our country. But uh, there is a lot of uh, films and uh, books and uh, so on about uh, finding the national <laughs> idea. <laughs> so I. I'm afraid I can't answer. Okay. Maybe I, I can I can say about the um, you know, symbols uh, which foreigners um, uh, um, foreigners uh, think that uh, this is a Russian uh, symbol. Uh, maybe it's a vodka and. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, I don't I don't think so. <laughs> Wow. Well, from it's outsiders' eyes, I think Russian symbol is Putin. There. <laughs> Putin. Whenever I heard about the Russian name, I remember Putin's face. Yeah. Yeah, but I, okay, I think the idea here, and maybe, okay, Natalie, this is actually very interesting. Um, you know, I'm not dismissing what you're saying at all. In fact, I find that very fascinating. Because for Americans, they equate baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, Chevrolet, all right, beer, uh, okay. Um, these things mean, these are direct and very direct, both emotional and, and, um, and non-emotional, uh, purely mental symbols of, of America. For Americans, they if I say baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie, someone's going to say America. At least Americans will. They conceive of these ideas as basically representing their culture and as symbols of America. I think you forgot yeah, one thing. Sorry, Michael. Guns. Guns. Yes, yeah, you're... guns. Freedom of guns. You can. Uh, 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 each person can have a gun at home. So. Uh, okay. Uh, I understand you, uh, but you uh, say about things that you, uh, that you uni you unit people, right? Uh, uh, so, uh, but but yeah. unite. But in Russia, uh, at uh, the last uh, few d decades, uh, or no? Uh huh. Um, uh, last years, uh, uh, there are there are no um, there are no things. I think it's it's my <laughs> point of view. Uh, there uh, are no things that uh, can uh, unite people. Uh, actually, unite people. Uh, our football team is not so good as we want, uh, and uh, so on, so on, so on. So uh, maybe there are things that uh, represent our country for. for Foreigners, as says uh, Heidi, uh, uh -huh, right. like Putin. But uh, I don't think that uh, I, um, I don't um, percept or uh, the the Putin perceive. Uh, Putin perceive yeah, Putin as a symbol of my country. <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> right. I, I don't know if this. I just made this up, but I, I'm sorry, but. I was actually thinking while you're speaking. Uh, okay, that's v again, that's very interesting. I don't know if this is an actual collocation of words or I just made it up. Uh, I don't know, but I would call what we're talking about social self-identity. Um, I don't know, symbolize social self-identity, maybe. Uh, Salvatore, do you think they're in the Italian psyche in the you know, uh, overall culture. Do you think there are actual physical objects which, to you or to people in your country, basically symbolize, represent Italy? Yes, teacher. We have uh, uh, soccer, 
because in Italy people uh, are crazy about soccer. Then uh, uh, other other things that represent represent my country is, uh, of course, uh, spaghetti, <laughs> wine, <laughs> and uh, do you know? Uh, uh, do you know uh, motorbike uh, Vespa? Vespa? Yeah, I do. I used to have one. Yeah. I had a Vespa uh, Salvatore yeah. when I was uh, when I was 18. I had a Vespa. Okay, okay, that it's was... a beautiful motorbike. <laughs> yeah, it, and for me it was like what a memory. It, it, when you say Vespa, that was like the best summer of my life, really. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cruising around on my Vespa, playing soccer, drinking wine, eating spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, excellent. Cool. And uh, Heidi, I know Japanese culture. Surely you have uh, self-identity symbols. Of course, right? Cartoon. What's that? Anime? Cartoon anime. Absolutely. <laughs> sure. I equate that with Japan as well. Uh yeah, okay, anyway, uh, we're almost out of time. Ooh, I want to leave you with this last lovely thought here. Uh, politics is the entertainment branch of industry. <laughs> what do you think of that? What do you think of that, Heidi? True? True or false? I think it's true. Yeah. Me too. I really like this idea. You know, Bush, a former president, came to Japan. They brought a lot of uh, uh, CEO. <laughs> uh huh. CEO. It's kind of uh, uh, his uh, representative of uh, American companies. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. All right. Natalie, what do you think of this? Is politics Tot the entertainment um, branch? Totally agree. <laughs> yeah. They're just, uh, oh, watch this over here. Watch these idiots perform <laughs> over here on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to what we're doing behind the curtain. Just watch these idiots. Yeah, they're entertaining. They're fun. They fight. They dance. They, make, they do stupid things you'll laugh at. Yeah, just watch these people over here. <laughs> <laughs> Sideshow is more like it. Yeah, Salvatore, do you, do you like this? Uh, this, uh, I think that this sentence means uh, that the politics uh, full of uh, economy that uh, uh, that is country, teacher. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. Okay, um, okay. Uh, Ladies and guys, for joining me and enriching my day with your wonderful conversation and uh, sharing of opinions. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Ashley. Thank, thank you. you. All right, you guys have a great day. Thank maybe you. I'll see you in a couple hours. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But Bye. take care. Bye bye. Thank you.